Within this video, we're going to continue working in lesson one, and specifically, we're going to come down here and we're going to be playing in the engine activity particle party. So, of course, you can follow along here in the PDF, and of course, you can follow along here inside of the video. Now, the goal of this is to create a particle system so that when the ball rolls into the bucket, it'll actually fire off a whole bunch of particles. And the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to create a Niagara particle system, and that system is going to live inside what's called a blueprint actor. That actor we can place anywhere in the world, so we're going to put it right there in the bucket, and then when the ball rolls into it, we're going to get a shower of particles. Let's start by building the Niagara system first. So let's go into our content drawer. And inside of here, there is a folder that's already set up for our emitters. So we'll just go ahead and double click on that. And inside of here, we're gonna create our own particle system. So I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna come up here to where it says Niagara system. It's gonna ask us how we actually want to build this. And we're gonna go ahead and build this based on a template, which is gonna make our lives a whole lot easier. So go ahead and select this one right here, and then go ahead and choose the next button down at the bottom. It's going to ask us which template we want to go ahead and use. And you'll notice right now this is completely empty. So what we need to do is we need to toggle off this little checkbox right here. So if this one is turned on, let's go ahead and just click that to turn that off. And now you'll see that we have a directional burst and a radial burst. Let's go ahead and use the radial burst. So we'll select that and choose finish. Next, let's go ahead and give this a name. So I'm just going to call this my confetti. To open this up, simply just double click on it. Now you're probably gonna get a floating window like this and just to make this a little bit easier to see on screen, I'm gonna click on our little tab up here and I'm going to dock it up above. So just click on the tab and just drag it and you'll see that it'll actually dock right up there at the top. Let's take a brief tour around this interface to get an idea of what's going on. You notice on the far left hand side over here, you will see a particle that's continuing to just spawn over and over. That's what our particle looks like. This area right here is the graph, and this is where we're going to be doing most of the work. And just to the right of it is a section that we're going to be able to actually change the parameters. So we'll walk through each of these as we need them. First, let's talk about the actual graph area. So if I right mouse click and drag in here, you can see that I can pan up and down and left and right. If I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and zoom out, and I can also left mouse click and drag any of these little orange nodes. These little orange nodes are the actual emitters. So there are three emitters inside of this system, and you can see that we are in a system right here. So let's take a look at these three emitters one at a time. So this omnidirectional burst, this first one, I'm going to zoom in on this so we can see exactly what this is. You'll notice there's a little checkbox up here at the very top. And what that is saying is that we want to be able to see those particles. If we turn this off, you will notice we see a lot less particles over there in the little viewport. That's because most of them are now gone. If we go over to our ribbon trail leader and we turn this one off, you notice everything disappears. And this is important to understand because in this case, our trails, the follower here, is actually dependent on this one. And if this one isn't running, neither will this one. So if we turn both of these on, we can actually see what's going on with the particles that are leading and the followers. Now, if we turn the followers off, you'll see that we still get a couple of particles, but the little ribbons are gone. Let's go ahead and turn all these back on. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and customize this, and we're going to give it our own specific color that we want to use. So go ahead and choose a color that you want to use in this particle system. So to begin this, let's go over to our omnidirectional burst and I'll go ahead and zoom in on this again. And specifically what we're looking for is this particle spawn. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say when the particles spawn, we want them to be a very specific color. So to do this, we just go click on this little plus icon right here to add a new module. The modules all live under here. You can see there are three. We're gonna add one more. Click on that and type in the word color and you'll see that we have an option for color right here. Go ahead and click on that. And on the right hand side, you will notice that we now have a little section for color. So what I wanna do is click on this little white spot right here because I don't want white particles, I want something different. So I'll click on that and I'm greeted with a color wheel. And if I change this to something like a dark blue, you can see that the particles that are associated with this first emitter turn blue. The other ones continue to stay white. So let's choose something that's gonna be nice and bright. So we're gonna go with a light blue and then all I need to do is click on this OK button right here, like so. So now these omnidirectional particles will actually be blue. So we want to go ahead and make that a thing on each one of these other two emitters. So we could go ahead and do that same process, but we can also copy and paste these. So what I'm going to do is inside my omnidirectional burst, I'm going to go ahead and select my color right here, and I'm going to right click on it and come down here and say copy. 
Now, over here in my ribbon trail leader, I can select the particle spawn right there. And if I right click, I can choose paste. And that's going to paste in that color module right there. And you can see our color is still blue. So let's go ahead and do that on the ribbon trail follower as well. So we'll go to the particle spawn, right click on it and go ahead and choose paste. Now you'll see that everything that we have over here is the same exact color. So we want to make sure that we're actually saving all of this work. So up here in the very top left hand corner, there is a little save button. So we want to make sure that we go ahead and click on that. Perfect. That actually completes this section. So now we have our particle set up. Now what we need to do is actually create the actor that's going to live in the world that will actually spawn all of these particles. So let's go ahead and close down this confetti particle. And you can do that right here by clicking on this little tiny X. And to create the blueprint actor, let's go back into our content drawer. And in this same location, I'm going to go ahead and right click. And up toward the top, we have one that says blueprint class. So we're going to go ahead and choose this to create this blueprint actor. We're going to get a new pop up and all you need to worry about is clicking on this first one right here because we want to create an actor. Let's go ahead and give this one a name. I'm going to say BP because this is a blueprint and we're going to call this one confetti. Once it's been created, go ahead and just double click on it to open it up. And again, if this is a floating window, we'll just go ahead and just dock it up here at the very top. Now we're going to need to create two things inside of here, a hollow cube that the ball can actually roll through and then the actual logic or the code that's going to go along with this, that's going to fire this off. So let's go ahead and build the cube first. So up here in the very top left hand corner, you'll find an area that says components and a button that says add. We want to go ahead and add in a box collision component. So I'm going to click on that add button and type in the word box and you'll see that we have a box collision. So go ahead and choose this. And you'll see that we have a box collision. Now, all we need to do is write the code so that when something rolls through this, it will actually have the particles spawn. And to write this, we actually need to change which tab we're in. We need to move over to the event graph tab. So you can find that here at the very top of the viewport. So we're going to click on that tab. And we're not going to need everything that you see in here. And this is going to feel very familiar because if I right mouse click and drag, I can actually move up and down and left and right. I can still continue to use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if I click on any of these, they become selected. So I'm just going to delete this top one that says event begin play. So I can just select them and press the delete key on the keyboard. And the bottom one down here that says event tick. And I'll go ahead and zoom in on this one to make it a little easier to see what we're doing. Let's also take a moment to explain what it is that we're going to be creating in the code. This node right here says event actor begin overlap. So when anything overlaps this cube, this will actually fire and it's going to send a signal out of this little pin right here. So if you click and drag on that pin, you get a little wire. Whatever's connected to this wire is the next thing that's going to happen. So in this case, what we want to do is fire off that Niagara system that we just created. So if you click and drag off that pin, get a wire and then let go, it asks you, well, what do you want to execute? In this case, we're going to go ahead and execute the particles firing. So if we search for spawn system at location, we will find this node right here. And all you have to do is just click on this in the list. And you'll get this big old giant node. So instead of here, we need to give this a little bit of information. We need to tell it which system we want to fire and we need to say where it's actually going to be firing at. So we can go ahead and click on this drop down on this very top one right here and go ahead and choose the my confetti. This is the one that we just created. Now we need to go ahead and choose a location and we want this to fire where this cube is in this world of this blueprint. So if I click and drag off of this yellow pin, because this is location information, it will ask me where do I want to actually put this? So I'm going to type in get actor location and choose this one in the drop down right here. So let's walk through this really quick. When we overlap the cube, we're going to go ahead and fire that confetti system at the location of this cube. That's it. That's all we have to do. So up here in the top left hand corner, because we've been writing code, we need to go ahead and compile it and then save it. Let's go ahead and click on that compile button and you'll see that it'll get a nice green check mark. We'll go ahead and save that. And now what we can do is go ahead and close this down because we don't need it anymore. And we can add that blueprint to our world. And to do that, simply just come down into our content drawer and grab this BP confetti and just drag it in. You see, we get a little cube with a little icon in the center of it. I'm just going to put it right here in my bucket like that. Then go ahead and play the game just to make sure this is actually going to work. 
So what we should see is the ball actually jump into there and we'll get our particles like so. So there you have it. You've actually built a particle system and set it up so that it can be triggered when an actor actually falls through it. And if it falls through it multiple times, it will fire multiple times. So go ahead and add a few of these to your world and get a nice little particle system wherever you need them.